This is the history. The British came, 1790. They didn't change anything. They had a plan of action. The Dutch never intended to take all the land in South Africa, but the British did. And the British sent colonists on the borders between the African and the Afrikaner so that they might use that as an excuse for warfare. It was planned. It was strategized. They intended to take all of the land, the silent, sophisticated British, and they did that. Then they brought the missionaries in to try to tell the people that you don't have to worry. You will go to heaven if you live right. You don't need an education because God will give you one after you die. You don't need a home for your family because God will do that through Jesus, but only after you die. He will do it for the white in this world. He will do all the things for you in the next world. You get nothing here but slavery. And the slaves were taught to serve the master with joy. Every time the master whipped you, say, thank you, Jesus, because it got you a little closer to your heavenly reward. That's what we were taught. That is what we were taught. Bring the missionaries here, and I will show them their documents. At one time, the Afrikaner didn't want the slaves to be taught Christianity. They were afraid that it might make them feel uppity, cheeky, that they might want to be free. And the missionaries said, no! Let us get them. We'll get into their minds. They'll never want to be free. We're going to change their name. We're going to change their outlook. We're going to change their culture. We're going to make them not want to do anything but serve you in the name of Jesus. I'm not bashing Christianity. I'm describing facts. And this not only happened in this country, it happened in America, and it happened in China. Wherever the missionaries went, they did the same thing. They told the poor people, just suffer for God. The more you suffer, the better you are. Your reward will be greater than white people. Don't think about how much they have. Think about what God is going to give you for eternity. And their mind became crippled. When the children came home and said, Mommy, what should I be? What should I strive to be? You say, nothing. Just be nice to the master. That's why I changed your name, so that you might fit in. Maybe he'll feel sorry for you. Maybe he'll pity you because your name is like his. He had no pity. That was not his purpose. His purpose was to work you to death. That's what it means to be a slave. That's the only thing you were good for. That's why you were brought here, and that's why you were continually exploited. Then gold came, first diamonds, 1867. Then about 20 years later, gold. And a mad rush from people all over the Western world to get rich quick, but not you. The Kimberley property, the land was owned by the Tawana tribe. They just took it, like District 6. They just said, you hereby notify, get out. Are they going to give an accounting of all those diamonds? Is the beer going to go to that tribe and say, we're sorry, let us work this up? What about the gold? White people didn't put gold in the ground. Allah put the gold in the ground. Don't tell me how much you contributed, how much you sacrificed to make this country. The gold was there. My God put it there. And the diamonds were there. It took millions of years for the power the power and strength and vision of the creative, all-seeing, almighty capacity for strength to put in the ground valuable minerals.
The history goes on, but the nine is the same. Your life, you were rejected. And then the white people decided they had an excellent idea. Why not try to get the colored to think they were better than the African? Tell them, even though you suffer, you don't suffer as much as those blacks, so you should feel happy. We could make you like the blacks. Look what we did to them. And some of our people got misled and confused, and we started unconsciously feeling a little superior, and we started saying the same things that the white man said. Oh, those comforts, they just don't have it. Brothers and sisters, don't fall into a trap. It's got 30 million people in this country. Don't get caught in a cross. Don't let white people put you in the middle of something that you regret. 30 million count. We must extend our hands to all of our brothers because we have their blood in us and we're proud of it. That's why we need to know the history of Africa so we can let everyone know we are black and we're proud. Forget that label color. Let white people have that. We're black and we're proud. Whether you're from Pakistan, whether you're from Malaysia, we're all black. If you don't believe it, ask the white people. You think they really believe you're any different? 